Good morning and welcome to Elgin County Council. It is March the 26th, 2024, 9 a.m. And I will call this meeting to order. First order of business is the adoption of the minutes. Resolved that the minutes of the meeting held on March 12th, 2024 be adopted. Everyone's had opportunity to peruse those minutes. If there are no errors or omissions, I would uh, entertain a mover and seconder. Councillor Hentz, Deputy Warden Jones will second. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Remind members of disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. And I don't see any. Moves us to section four, presenting petitions, presentations, and delegations. This morning, we are pleased to welcome Bernie Martin, Monica Nusik, and Peter Haywood from the Southwestern Public Health giving us a presentation on the 2024 budget and the road ahead. Good madam, Ms. Chair. Good morning, Warden Petrobaugh and members of council. Uh, it's a delight to be here. My name is Bernie Martin. I'm the current chair of the board for Southwestern Public Health, and it was a lovely drive in this morning. Um, we're expecting sunshine later today. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with Peter Haywood and Monica Newsink uh, to give an update on the 2024 Southwestern Public Health budget. I'd like to take a moment to recognize board members in the room, Deputy Warden Jones and Councillor Cookett, um, who serve with us <clears throat> at Southwestern Public Health. Uh, it was back in November, November 22nd of last year, that the board was presented with our 2024 budget, and after discussion, it was passed unanimously. Um, your public health unit is led by a, a board that is passionate and committed and also strategic and forward thinking in their data driven decision making uh, and decisions that not only affect our current day and the short term and long term effects of public health in our community. Much of our work in public health is upstream or preventative in nature. We know that every dollar that we spend today will save us dollars in healthcare down the road. Uh, and we believe that at this time, it's not the time with measles and so many other uh, issues in the news uh, and in our communities, it's not the time to let up on public health. This is the time to be proactive and preventative in our work. Uh, so today we look forward to presenting the 2020, 2024 business plan and budget. And I'll take this opportunity to introduce Peter, Peter Hayward, Program Director for Healthy Communities Division. Peter and Monica will present the details of the budget and will be available for questions at the end. Peter. Good morning, Mr. Warden, members of council and members of the Elgin County staff. My name is Peter Hayward, uh, Program Director at Southwestern Public Health. My areas of responsibility include chronic disease, injury prevention, substance use, and healthy schools. And it's my pleasure to, uh, to be here today to present the 2024 budget. As Board Chair Martin mentioned, um, between 20 and 2022, public health units were often working through the pandemic and um, public health units became very famous over that period of time in terms of managing and responding to the pandemic crisis. But over the past year, public health units have made headlines across Ontario for different reasons as they grapple with the post-pandemic recovery, rising inflation, and changes to the public health standards, including amalgamations. So today I'm here to explain the 2024 budget um, to members of council and, the, and how we develop the budget based on these responses. So the budget aims to improve health outcomes in our community through evidence-based planning. And there are two points I really wanna highlight throughout this presentation. Like all public sector organizations, wages are our most significant expense. And secondly, we have the good fortune of a board of health that doesn't wanna maintain the status quo. They want to move the needle. And by doing that, they want to make significant change through investment. So in the fall of 2023, the Ministry of Health introduced the Strengthening Public Health Strategy. This is a three-pronged strategy that includes voluntary mergers among the smaller public health units, the rescoping of the Ontario Public Health Standards, that that is legislation that dictates our work, and as expected, a 1% provincial annual funding increase for each of the next three years. So what else is on our mind? Well, we're thinking about emergency preparedness. Examples of that include climate change, um, the measles that's continued to be spread across Canada. The challenge is about recruiting and retaining um, competent public health staff. New data about population health status around the residents and the need for a strong public health presence 
uh, not just for now, but in, into the immediate future as well. There's a need to sustain a strong public health presence in the communities that we serve. So some of our program budgets and supporting obligations, it's really important that we, as, a, as the Board of Health, continue to make informed decisions based on evidence. And therefore, the Board of Health participates in various orientation throughout the year on our programs and services. We also are accountable to the Ministry of Health as it relates to our finances, and we provide quarterly reports and annual reports to the Finance Department of the Ministry of Health with regards to our expenses. And we also participate in effective procurement practices. So some of our population health highlights. In the spring of 2023, our epidemiologists presented some data about the health status of our residents um, to our Board of Health. And this slide shares some of the data that was discussed. So for example, the local, the local rate of hospitalizations per 100,000 population due to conditions entirely attributable to alcohol, um, including liver disease, reached a, a, an all-time high of in 2021 with regards to 300 305.7 hospitalizations per 100,000. And then over um, twice as many um, institutional outbreaks were, occurred in 2022. What stood out for our board of members is that we, we all agree that the health outcomes associated with our community need to be improved. And through that improvement, we need to invest in public health to strategize and to think about how we can improve health outcomes in our community. Our budget, therefore, is a commitment to the well-being of the community, to the individuals, the family, and the neighborhoods that we serve. Our commitment is to service excellence. Next slide, please. So with regards to these emerging issues in, in these Southwestern public health priorities in, in our attempt to improve um, public health outcomes in our communities, the board asked us to go back and assess the data and bring forward priority areas that we need to focus on, areas that we can move the needle, uh, which came to our pop, which came to a population health. There are eight items on this slide um, are, that are selected with extra investment in our, in, our, in our programs and services, such as emergency preparedness, harm reduction, substance use prevention in youth, mental health promotion, nurse family partnership, child immunization, infection prevention and control, climate change and extreme weather. For, I'll go over some of these. So in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been significant attention on emergency preparedness amongst local public health units, as evidenced by the 2022 Chief Milk Officer Health Report that advocated for increased funding and human resources for emergency management. With regards to harm reduction, an internal response plan that allows us to notify stakeholders when there are toxic drugs in our community. Regarding substance use pr prevention in youth, youth vaping has become a significant health issue as evidenced by the reports from our local schools and school boards. The Nurse Family Partnership is a public health nurse only home visiting program that empowers moms and clients in this program are identified as the highest risk category. Childhood immunization, we're currently working hard to catch up on our childhood immunization and there are many families um, more than ever before that don't have a family doctor to go to. And in infection prevention and control, the COVID-19 brought a new respiratory illness to the world and in the congregate settings that we support as it relates to our outbreak management. I'll now pass it over to Monica to share the finances. Good morning, my name is Monica Newsink. I'm the Director of Finance at Southwestern Public Health. As you can see, the majority of our budget, as Pete just highlighted, is staffing, which is required to run our mandated programs and services under the Health and Protection Act. Our amazing staff work in our local communities to prevent, promote, and protect our communities, ultimately resulting in better health outcomes. Inflation in 2023 was 3.6%, and many of our vendors increased their costs in excess of this 3%, which resulted in higher costs for many of our programs, facilities, and corporate services costs. Um, here is our board levy, which was attached to the letter that was sent out to you earlier this year. Our municipal contribution is based on the 2021 census data. Using this information, the County of Elgin contributes 23.97% of the municipal contribution. This is not 23.97% of the overall budget, but the municipal contribution only. In 2024, the County contributed 9% of the overall budget. This is an increase of 1% from the previous year, which is largely attributable to being the first year of our new priorities that Pete just highlighted. In 2023, they were prorated for only a quarter of the year. 
the remaining premium is the result mainly of salary increases and benefit premiums. Thank you. Uh, this time I'll be taking any questions. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm going to open it up to uh, council members. Any questions? Councilor Noble. Um, you, you said that there was a 1% increase from last year to this year? Um, when I look at the numbers, uh, I think we were about 1.1 million last year that, that the budget that came to us was, and uh, it's 1.8 million this year. Um, just doing simple math, that doesn't sound like 1% to me. My apologies. Sorry, that's 1% of our overall budget increase. Okay. It's uh, just to clarify then, it's about 55% increase to Elgin County. I'd like that to be known. All right. Councillor Sloan. Sorry, just a follow up. Could you just confirm that and give us the explanation, please? I'm not sure of the exact percentage, but the increase again, as I stated earlier, the main portion of that is because the increase last year, the levy amount was prorated. So the priority amount that the board approved in June, which was the second additional levy letter sent out, that portion was prorated for the quarter of the final year. And this year that amount would be levied for the entire year. And that portion is entirely paid by the municipalities um, as well as the remainder of the increase for this year. Councilor Noble? Um, I, I see this trend kind of concerning when we're looking at costs and, and being concerned about costs. Um, because in your presentation, you mentioned that uh, you had about a 3% increase to your costs this year. But when we look at it, uh, I, I did spend a little bit of time on your website. In um, 2018, Elgin County's portion of uh, the health unit was uh, $550,000, I believe. And uh, so in six years, we're looking at about a 300% increase, which um, I, I understand mandated programs. Um, I'm just considered, considering the, uh, the amount that those programs are being, um, like the service level of those, and then the costs that we're looking at with that. Uh, we raised our budget by probably just over 1%, I believe to cover the added costs um, that the health units brought to us. Uh, and um, are all your programs mandated? Through the warden to the council member, yes, all of our programs and services are mandated by the Ontario Public Health Standards, um, which outline the requirements of boards of health. Yes, Councilor Noble. To you, Mr. Warden, um, is there a service level that is mandated as well, or are the programs just mandated? Reward into the council member. Um, yes, there are prescriptive requirements within the Interior Public Health Standards. So as an example, um, with, re with regards to food safety, high-risk food premises, those premises that handle hazardous foods are required to be inspected three times per year. So many of the requirements do have prescriptions in terms of the frequency or the scope of, of the programs and services that we need to deliver. Councilor Cook, first. Thank you very much, Mr. Warden. Uh, mainly a comment rather than a question. Um, as, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, as, as mentioned in, in the presentation, the board in the spring of 2023 looked at a number of uh, data-driven issues in, in Elgin County and um, decided that they would uh, address those issues that were not only data-driven, but of course, evidence-based, uh, especially concerning the kinds of uh, uh, areas in which Elgin County was way above the provincial average in terms of alcohol addiction, in terms of uh, drug addiction and in, in terms of just about every area that could be uh, evidence throughout the province. So the board unanimously agreed that we should, that that, that uh, 
staff to provide a report to the board concerning how we're going to address those kinds of issues. And they brought back a report, I think in June of 2023, and uh, the board again decided that they would put forward the, the ask for the funds to address those issues. And that that's mainly, I think, uh, the reason for the increased amounts that we see in terms of the budget. Um, I would, I would ask, uh, you know, the, the Ministry of Health, the question is why 1% is sufficient in terms of the, you know, increase in inflation and everything else. And they're, they're driving the local people to, to meet the, the needs of, uh, of public health rather than providing the funds for it. And the board in its, uh, uh, in its debates uh, had the guts to say, let's do this. Uh, and I, they realized that it would impact, of course, the municipalities, but it is something that I feel is needed. Uh, and uh, we need to move that needle, as they said a couple of times, because the board, of course, uh, Southwest Public Health Unit is a preventative organization in terms of preventative health. So downstream, this money, as was mentioned, is going to help in, in you know, in the, in the long run. So uh, yes, it is a shock in terms of the increase in the budget, but uh, Southwest Public Health is doing its job. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sloan. <clears throat> thank you, through you, Warden. Um, just to follow up on Councillor uh, Noble, you said all your um, programs are mandated. You don't have any optional programming? Through the warden to the council member, that, that's correct. Everything is mandated through the Ministry of Health or for community service as well as it relates to our Healthy Growth and Development Program. Thank Councilor you. Just, whoops, when it comes to your mandated services, do you do comparisons to other jurisdictions with respect to uh, level of service and cost of service? Through the warden to the council member, so with regards to comparisons between other jurisdictions, all of the health units in Ontario are prescribed to deliver the same programs and services as prescribed within the Ontario Public Health Standards. Certainly we work and collaborate um, with other jurisdictions within Ontario, you know, namely the Middlesex London Health Unit as it relates to our Healthy Schools Program, where we share a, a common um, school board, the Thames Valley District School Board. Okay, Councillor Sloan. Thank you. So there is a bit of latitude when it comes to the administration. So if it's prescribed, I take it there's a, an area uh, within these standards of meeting them that might vary from uh, health board to health board. So you have a range with which to deliver these, is that? Part of, part of um, looking at public health from a local lens is understanding the epidemiology and um, the community wellness uh, within Elgin County, City of St. Thomas, and, and Oxford County. And so there may be some differences in, in terms of some of the programs and services that are delivered or how those programs and services are delivered. Um, but what's prescribed in, in the Ontario Public Health Standards is more about what we need to be looking at, such as the surveillance um, aspects. Um, we're looking at um, program development, the evaluation and performance indicators. So all of our programs and services um, you know, participate involve some form of evaluation to make sure that we're um, reaching those intended health outcomes. Deputy Warden Jones. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, just uh, more of a comment. Uh, I would concur with uh, Councillor Cookett. For the, um, we have some issues like St. Thomas, uh, Elmer, Woodstock, mm -hmm. um, Tilsonburg with drug addiction is a big thing, homelessness. Uh, alcoholism and Southwest public health has chosen to be a leader in that to some extent and trying to uh, find out what we can do to slow it down or uh, um, try and uh, help individuals out, out of that stream of uh, uh, alcohol and, and drug addiction. And it takes money to do that. And, uh, if you don't have the numbers before you, you can't really understand where you need to be and how you can get to the end goal of reducing that number. Because like uh, Councillor Cook had said, Elgin, uh, Oxford, or the whole uh, in Oxford are very high compared to uh, our neighbors around us. And I, I think uh, we do need to recognize that. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else?
Councillor Noble. It's true, Mr. Warden. I, I understand this, the, the challenges that we have, but we also have a, a fiduciary challenge. And I know all the municipalities along here have a lot of challenges with respect to wastewater and all kinds of stuff that we have a lot of places to put money. And, and my concern is, um, uh, yeah, we had a 3% um, inflation this year, but um, Southwest Public Health bill coming to us is up by 55%. And I, I think that needs serious consideration when we're talking about it and when we're looking at it and to have an understanding, like when um, we're told that your costs increased by 3%, but our bill is up by 55, I realize that we have a lot of programs that have to be filed and, and looked after. But if we continue down this path, next year's 2.7 and 2023 will be for uh, 5.4 million. So if we're going to continue on this path of 55% each year, um, that's, we have to think about that. All right, thank you for your comments. While you're here, can you confirm for me what the province's share of your total overall budget? What's the spending in the province? The province this year contributed um, almost $13 million for our general services. In uh, terms of a percent of your overall budget, what's that calculate to? I believe it's about 68% of the budget. 68%. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowing that uh, Chair Martin was at the Roma conference, uh, perhaps you heard the uh, minister commit to 75% funding. Uh, we're obviously not there. I guess the question then to you, Chair Martin, what can Elgin County do to assist Southwest Public Health to move that needle? Thank you, Warden Ketchabaugh, for that question. Um, a challenging question. Um, your ongoing support throughout this three-year 1% freeze by the province, so 2024, 2025, and 2026, is frozen at 1%. Uh, and so that means that the uh, funding, the programs that are not fully funded by the province do fall on the shoulders of us as obligated municipalities. So your ongoing support and encouragement uh, through these next three years, it is, it is potentially going to be a tough ride um, as we continue to de deliver preventative health uh, to address the outcomes in our community. Um, uh, in addition to that, I would say that as delegations at Roma and AMO and every opportunity that we have to have conversations at the provincial level to convey to them that that 1% freeze is having an incredible downloaded effect on our ratepayers and residents. Okay, so just basing on your comments, and I'm not trying to pick a fight here or anything, simply that uh, is, the, uh, is the province living up to its obligations on its mandated funding and it's the discretionary spending, which the board has decided is where it needs to be. Is that where the difference in shortfall is? Simply put. Uh, I would say that the, Monica can step in. The province is meeting its obligations in funding. Um, is that fair to say? I mean, just the fact that they're, they're continuing to only fund 1%, and even in the last few years, this is the first time we've received 1%. Our budget was frozen right. for almost 10 years previous to that, which is really a decrease to our funding. Okay. We're in the process right now of uh, trying to draft a, a letter, a lobby letter, shall we say, to the minister asking them to step up and fund their obligation. If they're already doing that, then we're going to look pretty silly. So what I'm asking is, is the province meeting its obligation or are they falling short? Because I don't want to go out there and harass the minister if they're already doing what they're mandated to do. They are meeting their obligation of the 1%. Of the 1%. I would suggest that the 1% is insufficient yeah. and that uh, I would approach it in that uh, encouragement of increasing that 1% to a cost of living equivalent mm -hmm. uh, would be the appropriate um, uh, angle to approach the province with. But that 1% is a negative increase for any budget, especially at Southwestern Public Health. We understand that. Thank you very much for your comment. Councillor Sloan. Thank you. Through you, Warden, if the province goes, as the Warden said, from 68 to 
what will the savings be for the Eldon County resident? Um, the ministry is on record with saying that their portion is no, like, although we've said 75, 25, they have mandated that they will continue to fund the amount that they provide in our letters. So that requires us to then fund the difference through the municipalities. So they're on record with saying the amount that is currently funded isn't changing. It will simply increase 1%. They're not adjusting it to a 75, 25 costing. It will continue for the next two years with just the amount it's currently funded with a 1% increase. It's up to the Board of Health how to manage that. Yep. Councillor Cookin. Um, just, just to be clear, when we're talking about the 75%, obviously the 75% is not happening until two years from now. Is that the idea? Because there's confusion in terms of 1% and then 75%, which is actually for us a 6.5%. So where's when do they, when does the 75% actually kick in? through the word into the council member. So with regards to the public health strengthening strategy that the province is currently engaged in, it's, it's really three pronged. Um, one, the prongs does include the funding model, um, which is gonna be revisited um, over the next um, 12 to 18 months. And it's expected the funding model will be introduced, a new funding model will be introduced in 2026, January, 2026. Thank you for that piece of information. Do you have your hand up, Councilor Cook? Deputy Warden. That doesn't necessarily say we're no. going to get an increase, though. I would agree with you. But thank you for that. Is there anything else from uh, Councillor Widner? Yes, thank you, Warden, here to this group. Are other public health units in Ontario under the same problems that we are? Is it just a local spot around here, or is everybody in Ontario under the same problems where they can have to ask for more money all the time? Through the Warden to the Council member, so each public health unit has its own board of health and their own board of health makes decisions with regards to governance, financial and programs and services. Um, and so I would say in general, there's many health units who are also just facing those inflationary pressures, um, those fiscal pressures. And so they're undergoing some um, consideration in terms of their delivery, their programs and services and how those are financed. But each board of health makes their own decisions. Okay. Thank you very much for, uh, for attending this morning and for your presentation. I uh, hope you don't feel that we were beating up on you. We're not. We're just curious. I know that. That's why we are uh, in the middle of putting our letter together for the minister and trying to uh, find a way to support this. Okay? We just want to make sure we're on the same path. Again, thank you very much. Please. Resolved that the presentation titled 2024 Budget and the Road Ahead from Southwestern Public Health be received and filed. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Councillor Cookett will move. Uh, was that Councillor Sloan? Did you? No? Okay. Councillor Widner? Will second? All in favor? Opposed? Buried. Thank you. Have a great day. Move on to Committee of the Whole. Resolved that we do now move into Committee of the Whole. Move and seconder, please. Councillor Noble. And Councillor Tellier. All in favor. That's carried. Thank you. Section 6, Report of Council, Outside Boards and Staff. 6-1, Director of Homes and Senior Services, Homes Committee of Management. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Mr. Warden, through you to members of council. This report seeks council's approval of the Committee of Management Terms of Reference and the bylaw number 24-10, both of which are included in this report, as well as designation of the Council of the County of Elgin as Committee of Management for Bobier Villa, Elgin Manor, and Terrace Lodge long-term care homes. The Ontario Fixing Long-Term Care Act requires that the, the council of a municipality establishing and maintaining municipal homes must employ a committee of management to oversee the management of the homes. Uh, currently with our homes, we have internal staff professional advisory committee meetings uh, 
They meet quarterly to advise on elements of the Fixing Long-Term Care Act. And then I bring reports required within the legislation to County Council, which has supported compliance within the legislation to date. The role of the Committee of Management is to provide governance oversight of the management of the three County of Algon long-term care homes and to ensure legislative compliance. Establishing a Committee of Management will not only provide governments for or provide for governance oversight, it will also provide an avenue for sharing the home's successes. There are four recommendations before Council, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Michelle, for that report. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Jaguer. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Through you, I just wanted to clarify, so will we meet separately then as a committee of management? Uh, I mean, I suppose the timing can be coordinated with meetings of council, but I just wanted to make sure it was an actual separate body, separate agenda and all of that. Through you, Mr. Warden, two members. Um, so within the terms of reference, it does speak under conduct of meeting that it can be conducted as part of a council meeting or conducted as a standalone meeting. So there will be a separate agenda. And I think we had some discussions. The recommendation would be to either start the council meeting or finish the council meeting with separating for this meeting. Okay, Deputy Warden Jones. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I think I know the answer, but I'm just gonna ask it anyway. So does this change the liability for us? as far as it being a separate committee looking after, maybe this is an answer for Mr. Loeb. Yes, I believe it is, and stepping up. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. Morning, morning, through you to the deputy warden. So no, the overall liability profile of the county or and anyone in the governance committee doesn't change. It's all covered by our insurance portfolio and the standard that we've always been hitting when it's been council and will going forward is uh, ensuring all of the regulatory compliance that is set up by the ministry and the regulations. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Anyone else? Michelle, please. I might just add that I've been doing a bit of research on training opportunities. So our association Advantage Ontario does have an excellent um, online learning on demand hub and it is uh, available so you would sign up for one year and it's it's a reasonable cost and all of the members of council as well as uh, the homes management or senior leadership member membership would be uh, open to or willing to participate in this there's an unlimited number of registrations and so it's for available for full the full year and you can go on, there's 30 sessions and it covers quality uh, legislation, risk management, um, finance, the financial aspects, the foundations of long-term care, uh, resident council. So I can forward that information um, or even bring it forward at the first committee of management to do a quick overview of what's available through that for consideration. So I think that may be beneficial. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Is there anything else from members? Okay, seeing none, please, Catherine. Resolved that the report titled Homes Committee of Management dated March 26, 2024 from the Director of Homes and Senior Services be received and filed and that council approve the terms of reference for the Committee of Management for Bobier Villa, Elgin Manor and Terrace Lodge long-term care homes and that the Council of the County of Elgin be designated as the Committee of Management for Bobier Villa, Elgin Manor, and Terrace Lodge long-term care homes to fulfill the requirement under subsection 1351 of the Fixing Long-Term Care Act 2021, and that Council authorize execution of bylaw number 2410 to establish a long-term care homes committee of management for the Corporation of the County of Elgin. Do we have a mover and seconder, please? <coughs> Excuse me, Councillor Henson, Deputy Warden Jones. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Brings us to 6 2, Director of Human Resources, 2024 Benefit Plan Renewal. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Warden, and through you to members of Council. Um, so before Council is a report that details what our April 1st, 2024 renewal looks like for our 
countywide benefits plan. And um, every year it renews April 1st, and it's based largely on experience, claims experience from December 1st through November 30th of the year prior. And Mosey and Mosey, and Mosey negotiates the um, annual renewal on our behalf. This was presented to human resources staff just about a week ago. And ultimately the overall 5.9% increase we're looking at for 2024 is representative of the claims experience. So increases in claims experience throughout the claim period, as well as inflationary increases. So when we look at things like the, the dental um, guide, it has been going up pretty significantly year over year. So based on inflationary pressures there, and that would be across the board on all of our um, benefits that we provide. And we have verified that the 2024 benefit renewal increase is containable within the 2024 budget as calculated under the benefit plan costs. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that council might have. All right, thank you very much for that, uh, Amy. Does anyone have any questions? No? Oh, oh. <laughs> bring them on. <laughs> Okay, it's unfortunate, but that's just uh, the way it is. All right. Okay, please, Catherine. Resolved that County Council approve the 2024 negotiated renewal rate adjustments with Manulife Financial for all County of Elgin benefit plans. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Sloan will move. Uh, Councillor Widner will second. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. 6.3, Director of Financial Services, the Treasurer, the 2024 Borrowing Bylaw. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Mr. Warden. Through you to members of Council, the, the report before you today outlines the need to annually enact our borrowing bylaw that enables the county to maintain a valid credit facility that is at the ready with our banking institution. The bylaw authorizes the head of council and treasurer to borrow approved amounts to support current needs and other qualifying expenditures as set, as set forth in, this, in section 407 of the Municipal Act. Borrowings taken out using this credit facility would be for short-term duration only and would be required to be paid back before the year end in full. While the county has not had to utilize this facility from an emergency preparedness perspective, this advanced planning would enable us to pivot quickly to address immediate concerns while still being able to meet our obligations. The recommendation and bylaw have been provided today for consideration. I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Jen. Does anyone have any uh, questions for the Director of Finance? I can't let you off the hook that easy. The terms of reference uh, or the bylaw itself specifies exactly what the maximum uh, borrowable is, which is great. Uh, and I know it's a practice that we do in, in the municipality of BAM that should the need arise, council would be informed. And I assume that that would be the same practice here. Absolutely, Mr. Warden, you would have to sign off with me. So I would be bringing that forward to council for consideration. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Seeing no further questions, Catherine, please. Resolved that the March 26th, 2024 report titled 2024 Borrowing Bylaw submitted by the Director of Financial Services Treasurer to outline the need to maintain a credit facility be received and filed and that the amended accompanying borrowing bylaw for 2024 be read for approval. Do we have a mover and seconder? Deputy Warden Jones and Councillor Noble will second. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 6 4, Director of Financial Services, Treasurer, Council, and Outside Boards Remuneration and Expenses. Uh, please, Jennifer. Uh, through you, Mr. Warden, to members of Council. As per Section 284 1 of the Municipal Act, the County is required to provide a statement of remuneration and expenses paid to councillors and outside boards from the previous year. During 2023, Warden and Council remuneration totaled 
$309,356.89 and expenses totaled $33,113.13. Remuneration paid to persons on outside boards totaled $16,050 during this period. The detailed reports are provided in the appendices to this report. The recommendation is to receive and file for informational purposes. I would be happy to answer any questions at this time. All right, thank you very much, Jennifer. Does anyone have any questions? All is silent. Catherine? Resolved that the report titled Council and Outside Boards Remuneration and Expenses, dated March 26, 2024, from the Director of Financial Services Treasurer, be received and filed. We have a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Hentz. Councillor Tellier. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Brings us to 6-5, Director of Legal Services, LS24-5, Road Closing Bylaw, Part 5, 11R, 10, 965. It's a mouthful, Nick. It is, yes. No other way to describe it than the part on the plan, unfortunately. Um, so this is a, a report that recommends passing the bylaw that's on the agenda today that will close a part of Union Road that is 25 square meters. Um, the easiest way to explain it is just re referencing the plan that is attached to the back of the report. Essentially, the uh, Union Road, as there's a development occurring on the adjacent property, um, is there's going to be some road widening to make the curve look the right way it should in terms of the width of roadway we will have. The net result of that is a tiny little triangle that goes out into what I'll just describe as the field currently, but will be part of the development. And so the county is going to transfer that small triangle to the uh, developer that's beside it so that the road width has the natural curve that we're looking for. Um, and essentially, we need to pass this bylaw uh, so that we can close that tiny triangle as part of a highway because we don't want to transfer part of a highway to a private landowner beside us. It'll just create a cloud on title for decades. So it's, it's as housekeeping as it gets from a legal perspective, um, but it just needs to be done so we can transfer the part. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Nick, for that report. Does anyone have any questions? Hmm. Seeing none. Resolved that the report titled LS245, Road Closing Bylaw, Part 5, 11R, 10965, dated March 26, 2024, from the Director of Legal Services and Director of Engineering Services, be received and filed, and that council pass the road closing bylaw for part of lot 16, range one, south of Union Road, part lot 16, range two, south of Union Road, part five, plan 11R, 10965, Township of Southfold, as it appears on the March 26, 2024 council agenda. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Deputy Warden Jones? Councillor Cookett. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Which brings us to Section 7, Council Correspondence, uh, 7.2, Items for Information to Consent Agenda. We have several pieces of correspondence. Does anyone wish to draw attention or ask questions on any of these? Do you want me to read them out or... Got time. Deputy Warden Jones. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Just a comment on the one from Godridge wanting OGRA and Wilma to get back together. And I'm not even sure if that's even uh, uh, the, the, uh, there's so many people come, delegates come in these meetings. I don't think they have a place big enough to even think about that anymore. I know when we were together, it was crowded yeah. at Royal York. So I'm not sure how they would deal with it and because we have grown right there's more mm -hmm. delegates coming all the time and so just to comment I, I don't think they're on the right track there but it hasn't seemed to be any movement on it since uh, I believe this was first brought forward to the delegation uh, in 2019 and we haven't seen any movement so it may not happen it was convenient I'll give you that in the past it was very convenient but 
No. Any other item? Councilor Cookin. Uh, just a comment. I don't think you need to do anything further with it, but the Town of Aurora resolution is kind of a no-brainer. And I think most municipalities who have a high school in their area are already doing that kind of thing. I noticed they want a, a memorandum of understanding with the school board, which is probably the wrong people to do it, although the, the, they are the legal umbrella. They don't mention talking to the person who could make it happen, and that's the principal of the school and also the uh, the QP representatives, which are the, the main reason why we have issues with uh, sharing uh, kind of facilities. But, um, you know, great idea, not a new one. So I just, just a comment, thank you. Well, thank you for that. Deputy Warden Jones. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I know in St. Thomas, they use uh, Parkside, they use Arth Bowden for evening uh, rec, bas mm -hmm. basketball, volleyball, whatever. It's already happening here, so I'm not sure why they're having a problem up in Aurora. But. Perhaps inconsistent treatment across different school boards. And uh, yeah, I think it's always better. You're right as uh, you know, if, if community groups are have access to these facilities, use them. But recognizing, of course, as Councillor Cook is saying that there are uh, cleaning fees and things else that go with it. And of course, uh, everyone's worried about liability and things to be considered. Any other piece that anyone wants to draw attention to? I'm not hearing of any action to be taken on this, but simply to receive for information. Okay, Catherine, please. Resolved that correspondence items 7.2.1 to 7.2.6 be received and filed. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Councillor Noble will move. Councillor Cookett will second. All in favor? And that's carried. Brings us to section eight, other business. Do we have any statements or inquiries by members? I'll take the uh, moment then to wish everyone, those viewing and present in the room, a very happy Easter. It's coming up this weekend. So remember to get your eggs. Is there any notice of motion? Matters of urgency. We have no closed meeting items. Brings us to section 11, motion to adopt recommendations from the Committee of the Whole. Resolved that we do now adopt recommendations of the Committee of the Whole. Do we have a mover and seconder, please? Councillor Widner. Councillor Noble, thank you. All in favor? That's carried. Section 12, consideration of the bylaws. Being a bylaw to establish a long-term care homes committee of management for the corporation of the County of Elgin. Resolved that bylaw number 2410 be now read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Mover and seconder, please. Deputy Warden Jones. And Councillor Jaguer, all in favor? Any opposed? Okay, that's carried. 12 2. Being a bylaw to authorize the warden and treasurer to borrow from time to time to meet current expenditures during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. Resolved that bylaw number 2411 be now read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Sloan. Councillor Hentz will second. All in favor? That's carried. Road closing. Being a bylaw to provide for the closing of a portion of Union Street, legally described as plan of survey of part of lot 16, range one of South Union Road, part lot 16, range two, south of Union Road, Southwold, being part 511R, 10965 Township of Southwold. Resolved that bylaw number 2412 be now read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. We have a mover and seconder for that. Councillor Noble, Deputy Warden Jones, all in favor? 
That's carried, which brings us to the uh, confirming bylaw. Being a bylaw to confirm proceedings of the Municipal Council of the Corporation of the County of Elgin at the March 26th, 2024 meeting. Resolved that bylaw number 2413 be now read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Noble will move. Councillor Sloan will second. All in favor? That's carried. And finally, the adjournment. Resolved that we do now adjourn at 9.51 a.m. to meet again on April 9th at 9 o'clock a.m. Mover and seconder, Councillor Crooked and Councillor Widner will second. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We are adjourned and thank you for attending this morning.